Hey everybody, welcome to April 27th, 2020. This is World War II Continued. As you can tell, my hair is growing out very long, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try something. I'm sorry if it's lame, but the ladies at lunch, the lunch ladies, they told me, Mr. Turner, grow out your hair. It's going to look good. It's going to look good. Grow out your hair. It's like, all right, fine. I'll grow out my hair. Grow out my hair. Grow out my hair. Grow out my hair and boom, quarantine. So, what I'm looking for, what I want you to do is I want you to send me your best quarantine hair don't care picture. You're going to send it right here, turner.brian at brevardschools.org. Put it in a little slideshow. We'll send it around. I don't want a cute picture. This isn't like you trying to look cute on t TikTok. This is quarantine hair don't care. All right? And then we'll, we'll do something with it. That's our goal. All right? Quarantine hair don't care. All right. Now let's talk about some World War II type things. Um, all right, so you got to take me seriously with my hair looking like this. This is why I never do crazy hair day, especially on today. Um, talk about World War II, talk about the Holocaust, which is a very, very difficult topic to talk about. I don't love talking about it. Um, Ms. McClellan and I are going to try and figure out something to do on Wednesday for the Holocaust. So, um, together, because we typically teach it together, not together, but, you know, at the same time. All right, so we're going to talk about the war in the Pacific next week. We're going to talk mainly this week about the war in Europe. And the war in Europe is a more ground-based war, whereas the war in the Pacific is more of a naval-based war. What happens in Europe is, is that Germany, it's basically take, taken over all of what you see in the blue here. So everything that's in the blue is what Germany has taken over. So all of this is taken over by the Axis powers. So the United States and the United Kingdom and Russia, the Soviet Union, and to some part France, they're just, they have to liberate Europe. They have to take Europe, literally the whole entire fake continent, back from the Nazis. Um, so once again, we get involved because we get bombed at Pearl Harbor. Now, this is a little bit weird. You think that most of this is about the Nazis, and it is. But in June 1944, we have Operation D-Day. But that's three years after. It's three years after we start the war. The war for us actually starts down here in North Africa. And the reason that it starts in North Africa is a little bit up in the air. I always thought that it was about supplies, that they were trying to get things in, you know, through this way. Who knows? Um, it's not, it wasn't real clear when I did the research why they started in North Africa. One thing that happened was, was that the Italians were looking for easy wins. So they take over all of North Africa and they start in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is where they start. It, um, Africa has a lot to do with natural resources. Again, you've heard this story before. In this case, they need oil because the tanks are big, they're heavy, and they need oil. They need oil to run them. They need gas. They need electric. They need coal. This is an incredibly industrialized war. And Germany doesn't have the resources, mainly oil, neither does Japan, that they need to take over the world. So they have to start taking over smaller, weaker countries. And that's kind of what happens. Italy does a really good job. They want, Italy's doing it for a little bit, a couple different reasons. They want to restore the Roman Empire, but Italy has all of this taken care of and the British are coming in and they're kind of winning. So the Germans then have to change their strategy and they have to move people out of France and move them in to Northern Africa. Now, a couple of things that you should probably know, um, the Desert Fox was the number one, the number one general for Germany. He was incredible. And um, I actually saw a thing that was talking about, he was on vacation. Uh, somebody got married, maybe his daughter was getting married, 
and so on in June of 1944. So he wasn't actually on duty during D-Day. Anyway, the Desert Fox is Edwin Rommel. He's German. He's taking care of business down here for them. The Italians suck at fighting. They are the worst fighters in the history of fighting. They pretty much just give up. Whenever they're pushed back just a tiny bit, they're, they're, they quit. And the Germans, they have Rommel, but they also have the best chemists in the world. And they make the best drugs in the world. They are actually, all of them, high on as much methamphetamine as you could possibly want. They're taking so much methamphetamine to keep them awake, to keep them moving, to keep them energized, that they actually start to hallucinate. And they'll start firing their weapons around because they think that people are, are coming out of, you know, the enemy's coming. The United Kingdom, to keep up, develops a drug called amphetamine. Both of them uh, act very similar. They act the same way. So this whole entire war is taking place on a, with a bunch of 22-year-old kids high on methamphetamines. Just to be aware, that's what they use for ADHD medication now is methamphetamine and amphetamine, but I digress. Anyway, the United States, we don't we don't use methamphetamines. We use chocolate and we use cigarettes. So I don't know which one's worse. They're all pretty bad for you, but cigarettes and chocolate versus amphetamine and methamphetamine. Anyway, um, the Germans are down here bailing out Italy, and they end up getting pushed back, and the United States comes up into 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 Italy and. Operation Barbosa. Um, in 1943, Mussolini is killed, and he um, the Italians switch sides. All right. So even when you take off Italy off of this map, you still have the rest of Germany that is surrounded, or the rest of Europe that is surrounded. So in June 1944, you have Operation D-Day, which is in the most heroic moment in American history, more than Yorktown, more than Gettysburg. You have these young men who are on these ships who are coming across the, the ocean, the English Channel, which has 23-foot seas. I was on the English Channel one time, and it was a, my first real time on a boat, and I thought all boats were that rocky. They're not. Um, what they do, again, supplies, 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 they actually pretend and they make they use the art department in the army to make it look like they're going to attack here uh, they make these balloons and they move the balloons around and um, it's called operation fortitude and hitler thinks they're going to attack here because it's the closest it makes the most sense then on june 6th 1944 actually I had a date right the first time they launch operation d-day and what they did before they launched Operation D-Day was they went ahead and they bombed all of the supply lines going in to these places in France, these, these towers, these foxholes. And then they sent more humans than they had bullets. They also took the airborne division and they dropped them in behind enemy lines and they attacked from the boats from the water here. Now these cliffs are not cliffs that you're used to. They're not cliffs like you would see at Cocoa Beach. These cliffs are incredibly, you've seen some of these pictures before, but this is the cliffs. So if you, you gotta think that you're attacking in 1942 and you know that whoever has the high ground has the most power, they can, knock you out pretty easily. So they're taking landing craft that looks like this. They have to storm the beaches and then they have to climb up and take out the Germans. It's not an easy task. That's D-Day. Once they have that cleared out, it's pretty much over for the Germans. Um, it should also be said that Hitler was very high on methamphetamines too. So 
he had that going for him. He actually started to hallucinate as well, and one of his problems was was that he would get too focused on one thing, one small detail, and not look at the big picture. All right, um, this is one of my favorite memes from history. We talked about all of this. Make sure you're taking notes. I haven't made the notes yet. Um, all right, so this is D-Day veterans sitting across from themselves in the same plane, which dropped them into Normandy. So this was my, my big face and my massive hair is in the way, but uh, it's a pretty cool picture. All right, so um, this is wisdom from a World War II vet. If you, if you encounter a unit you can't identify, or identify, fire one round over their head so it won't hit anybody. If the response is a fuselage of rapid, precise rifle fire, they're British. If the response is a blank storm of machine gun fire, they're German. If they throw down their arms and surrender, they're Italian. And if nothing happens for five minutes and your position is obliterated by an artillery strike, they're American. Which brings me to my favorite joke that I've never told you guys, because I, I can't believe I got this far and I never told you this. This is my favorite history joke of all time. It's pretty short, too. So, you have a German, a couple of German guys, 22, 23 years old. They're sitting around in a bar. And they're talking trash to the Americans, to these American kids, 22, 23. And they're just talking, and these American kids are like, just stop talking, stop talking. Finally, the German guy turns to the American guy, and he goes, looks at him real mean, and he goes, how many World Cups have you won? The American, without missing a beat, turns to him, looks him right in the eye, and goes, How many world wars have you won? <laughs> Done for the day. Um, really, that's pretty much all we're going to do today. Make sure to um, talk about Yalta. Um, as Germany is losing, the big three, Stalin, Roosevelt, and Churchill, they get together and they decide that they're going to figure out how they're going to break up Germany. This is usually a test question. I haven't decided if I'm doing a test or not. If I do do a test, it'll be open, bo open book, so relax. Um, I really kind of want to save the Holocaust uh, for Wednesday. I don't know what we're going to do with that. So pay attention, please. Um, make sure that you're, you're paying attention. All right, so real quick to review, here's my email address. There's no hashtag there. Hold on. Turner.brian at brevardschools.org. Send me your best quarantine hair, don't care picture. We'll see what we can do with that. Also, if you have a sibling that had me, you know, get them involved too. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, I don't really want to say names. I don't want to leave people out like, you know, Bobby or Troc or Sophia or any other sibling who may have, and I don't mean to leave anybody out or your family, get them involved too. Hashtag. Quarantine hair, don't care. Um, send those pictures to me. Let's do it by Wednesday. You got nothing really better to do. And again, I don't want cute. Like, I want funny. That's my goal. Because if I'm doing this, you can do that too. All right, guys. Um, once again, pay attention. Uh, I'll post it somewhere. We're going to try and do a Miss McClellan, Mr. Turner thing together so that we can um, talk about the Holocaust from a couple different angles. Y'all have a great day. Um, don't eat too many snacks, process sugar's bad, bad, don't become nocturnal, try and get up on time, and that's really all I got.